God. In the same spirit, we want to worship God. Wherever you are, just lift up your hands like this unto Jesus. Adonai, we exalt you this morning. Each end of days, we bless your holy name. I am that I am, we exalt you. We say there is none like you. Daddy Lord, we bless you. Wherever you are, just speak to the Lord. Just lift up your voice and say, God, I bless your name. God, I bless your holy name. Jesus, you deserve all the praise and adorations. We worship you, O oh Lord. Hey, hey, hey. You are God. From beginning to the end, there's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. Oh, you are God. From beginning to the end, there's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. Oh, you are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. You've got time. And seasons in your ranks. We honor your name, Lord Jesus. Hey, you call for light out of darkness. And you don't need a man to be the God you are. I told hey, yeah, you are told. To call me wrong, you've got times and seasons in your ranks. There is nobody like you, Jesus. Hey, hey. You call for love.
from beginning to the end. There's no place. Lift your voice up wherever you are. You were God all by yourself. You are God. Oh, you are God from beginning. There's no place I love you, Lord For your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up hey, Until I lay my head I will sing Of the goodness of God Your goodness speaks for me even when I don't deserve it Lord. And all my life you have been so, so good. Hey, yeah, yeah. In every breath that I am there, I will sing of the goodness, of the goodness. Say, oh. Even when I don't deserve it, your goodness is running after, is running after me. Your goodness is running after. Your goodness, your goodness is running. Lift your voice up. Your goodness is running out. We bow down and worship Yahweh. Lift your voice up. Say we bow. this room sing Yahweh
have everything. Me The main thing is the main thing. You will sing the whole day. Luke chapter 2. Before Ganza can I tell you why? Look at Senpai Timiano. Telling you about Kumasi. When you come, there's so many things you should learn. And the first thing I don't like you are doing, you are coming late. You are the closest living here. Chapter 1. It's back on. Roll it, roll it to Elizabeth Zachariah. No, you went to chapter 2 again. I said chapter 1. It was, I don't know who is there. Is there. Verse 1. Is there. Huh? Is there. 6, that's 6. 5. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zechariah. You, you come from far. Think about yourself like you are Zachariah. He was of the division of Abijah, a certain group of priesthood. His wife was the daughters of Aaron. Her name is Elizabeth. She had a need. She didn't have a child. Now only ba. He has a need. Onusu wa He didn't have a child. Onusu only ba. When they were living the mountains of Judea. Bra wa fi Judea me poso. Coming to Jerusalem for the festival, just like you came. Send ya yansu ya ben wa mo ba Jerusalem a fashion on. They could say. This time we are not going to Jerusalem. We've gone there many times. The baby hasn't come. I came. He said, I've gone many times. He saw no. But what I want, I haven't achieved. If I don't go with another person, the administration will be mad at me. So he brought one person. So for to leave and come to that meeting, he wasn't expecting anything. When they came, the priesthood, they've divided like how you come. So, God copy is that. So, the general secretary, random, will say, You, you are opening prayer. You, you are. Speaking. But as they're doing the program, God was doing the program. And he said, put Zachariah to be the one who will say the prayer. Just like you, you, Kope, you are singing. You have two temptations. We are going to impress or we are going to bring God's presence. Say, you have been where you are. 
One time I was doing a meeting. Doing a meet, bring him straight. occupied in front of you. Take your seat. I you to say. See, these people I'm talking to you about, Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Her name means God keepeth the oath. What God says. Zachariah means God remembers. For them to come to Jerusalem, they will have refused to come. Because their need was not met. But he came. And they balloted. And he was to go say prayer. He wasn't expecting anything. But what you are expecting is not the same thing God is expecting. You miss a place to say a big amen. amen. Tell yourself, what do you expect is not what God is expecting. You say, I'll come first meeting, I'll go second one, I'll go to Accra and shop. Good for you. Some of the people came from my dad and all they want is come and hunt for Obishi, grass cutter. I see one of free and a dance upon us. One more dear, one more dear, and say, On my chick, who see. Tell your neighbor, don't come cut your pussy here. Remember, chick, who see what I he's going. I'm preparing to receive. He's going to come and see. Oh, but I will go so he can't stay till evening. On to me, it's not for what God will do. As soon as Zachariah went into pray. Zachariah sent him to call Bompire no. Who showed up? He na ne daddy. Buffo. Did the angel know Zachariah will pray? So Buffo ni me say Zachariah be Bompire. Ani. God knows you are here. O nyakupo ni me say won so wa ha. You you joke. God knows you are here. And he has selected the thing to meet your most important need. You, 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 you. Oh, he has us to come. No. That's not how it is. You prepare them with faith. Pram, pram. Those who stay, they cheating themselves. How you know your problem is going to be solved? What, there are two types of time. The clock. What is the other one? Kairos moment. Kairos. A divine appointed moment. So this morning, get it before evening. Mm. May I blame your pastors? They have to train you well. Amen. Build you with expectation. Feel a bus. Those who come always and they go, they say, leave them alone. As soon as he went in, God spoke. What did I say? 
Are you in the same position? You don't know. You don't know what God has put on him to say. But you sit in a meeting with expectation. Don't say me, I'm in touching, but all means they will meet again. As for a doctor, he will come again. What happened yesterday won't happen again. You have one and a half days old. Half day today, and Sunday, and the program is over. So get up and say, I'm not going back the same. And let's welcome our preacher for today. As he speaks, I think I open your mind. You should say, that pastor is going to speak about me. Clap, let's receive him. You see why I cut the music? They'll go and say, doctor, cut our praise and worship. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank God for this beautiful morning. Amen. Amen. It's always a joy coming to Accra. And particularly to Mana Mission. Mana Mission. Amen. Amen. Uh, I grew up in Tema. We used to swim at the Sakuma Beach. Na Sakumana Beach. And during the holidays, we spend most of our time on the Sakumana Beach. Swimming. Climbing the coconut trees. The coconut trees are no longer there. Our parents even didn't know we knew how to swim. And we thank God that He kept us. Amen. Amen. So when I come, I look around, I have a lot of funny memories. Amen. Amen. Let's bow heads for prayer this morning. Our Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name for your goodness and your mercies towards us. We give you all the glory, all the honor. And we thank you for all that you have done during this convention. Lord, as we go into your word, grant the utterance, O Lord. And let it be the word that will strengthen your people, lift them up, and change somebody's destiny today in the name of Jesus Christ. By your spirit, minister to us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This morning I'm speaking about the oil and the sword. The oil and the sword. Amen. Amen. I want us to read two passages of scriptures from the book of 2 Samuel. The first one is from 2 Samuel chapter 1, verse 17 to 23. And David lamented with this lamentation over Saul and over Jonathan, his son. And he bade them teach the children of Judah the use of the bow. Behold, it is written in the book of Jesha. The beauty of Israel is slain Upon thy high places, how are the mighty fallen? Tell it not in God, publish it not in the streets of Ashkelon. Lest the daughters of the Philistines rejoice, lest the daughters of the uncircumcised triumph. Ye mountains of Gilboa, let there be no dew, neither let there be rain upon you, nor fills of offerings, for there the shield of the mighty 
is vilely cast away. The shield of Saul, as though he had not been anointed with oil, for the blood from the blood of the slain, from the fat of the mighty, the bow of Jonathan turned not back, and the sword of Saul returned not empty. Saul and Jonathan were lovely and pleasant in their lives, and in their death they were not divided. They were swifter than eagles. They were stronger than lions. Amen. Amen. Now the second scripture, you know, this is a lamentation of David. When um, King Saul and uh, his son Jonathan died in war. Amen. Amen. The second one too is another lamentation of David. When Abner was killed. In 2 Samuel chapter 2, uh, chapter 3, verse 32 to 35 says, and they buried Abner in Hebron. And the king lifted up his voice and wept at the grave of Abner. And all the people wept. And the king lamented over Abner and said, Died Abner as a fool? Died? Thy hands were not bound, nor thy feet put in fetters. As a man followed before wicked men, so fellest thou. And all the people wept again over him. And when all the people came to cause David to eat meat while it was yet day, David swore saying, so do God to me and more also if I taste bread or aught else till the sun be down. Amen. Amen. See that Clearly, these are two lamentations that David lamented over the death of certain people in Israel. Now, David, apart from Jonathan, say Jonathan, King Saul and Abner at this at the point of their death were not really friends of David. Now, Saul and David now among Shania and Abner and Anafasa. Amen. Amen. But then, I believe this is one of the things that God loved about David. Now, Ojidipai, he said, we titri and ananya kopan dofa David. Even people who hated him. Now, kofan so epo na chile. David loved them in return. Now, odo mo kain. And it's surprising is it that a man who lived in the Old Testament had that kind of heart. Now, a man who said, "O berema, o wa na wa pam da dem na wa kusa kumai." Hallelujah. Amen. But what I'm addressing this morning is this. When King Saul died, David didn't know he had died. David Because he wasn't part of that war. Actually, David had been driven from Israel and was living in the land of the Philistines. Now were free Israel for whom I call Philistine for. And the king of the Philistines had given him a piece of land, a township. Called Ziglag. So there he lived with his men of war. Because they were being pursued. And there was a prize over the head of David. But he had conducted himself so well in the land of the Philistines. So when this particular war in which Jonathan and Saul died in was approaching. The king of the Philistines asked David to join them nah. for the war. But the uh, leaders and the army officers of the uh, of the Philistines refused. Nah. Philistines and it was good that they refused. The king of the Philistines had come to appreciate David so much. And had come to trust him so much. That he thought that he could go with David to fight against Israel. Because he thought the king of Israel was persecuting David. So David will 
oblige and go with them. I believe it was the hand of the Lord to deliver David from a very big dilemma. But when they return, when the Philistines refused David and his men, and they returned to Ziglag, but the time they came, the Amalekites had come to raid their camp. And burnt their township. Carried away their wives and children. And every valuable thing had been carried away. So David and his men wept. The Bible said they wept so much there was no strength left in them. And then the people began to talk about killing David. His own men who had stood with him was now fed up. We were now fed up. They felt that now we've suffered too much under the leadership of this man. And nothing good has come out of it. So let's stone him and go and surrender to Israel. And the Bible says David encouraged himself in the Lord. And then he saw the face of the Lord and asked the Lord whether he should pursue the Amalekites. And the Lord said he should go. And he asked the Lord, Will I recover everything? And the Lord said, Yes, you will recover everything. So David went to this war, and by the grace of God, he met, he found them. There was a very intense battle. But David and his men won. And they were able to bring back their wives and children. And then they came back with much spoil from the Amalekites. Whilst that battle was going on, Israel and the Philistines were also fighting. So when David returned, he didn't know what was happening on the battlefield. After two days, on the third day, somebody came to their camp and said that King Saul and Jonathan had fallen in the battle. And the person happened to be an Amalekite. Somehow serving in the Israeli army. And so he came to David. Brought the report. Thinking that he was bringing good news to David. That his enemy. King Saul. Ah, yes, so. had fallen in battle. So David said, bring the man to me. And the man came carrying the crown of King Saul and then the bracelet of King Saul to prove that in reality this king was dead. And David Inquire from the man. Now David What actually happened? And he told him and his men of how miserably the war the war went against Israel. Now Amen. Amen. And how Israel was defeated. How God's people fled from the battlefield. And how King Saul was wounded. And they were pursuing him. And according to the man, King Saul didn't want the Philistines to kill him. So he asked the man who was behind him. Now to kill him instead of the Philistines coming to kill him. And so, he, according to him, he stood on King Saul and beheaded him. And took those things and brought them to David. Thinking that he will be rewarded. 
for killing David's enemy. That was when David cried with this bitter lamentation. Amen. Amen. David said, David said, how are the mighty falling? Amen. Amen. So the beauty of Israel is slain upon the high places. How are the mighty falling? Tell it not in God. Publish it not in the streets of Ashkelon. Let the daughters of the Philistines rejoice. Let the daughters of the uncircumcised triumph. Can you interpret that? Or oh, it's too much for you. Okay, but he lamented. With this lamentation over King Saul. Now, and David literally cursed the mountains upon which King Saul and Jonathan died. Now, Jonathan who was so no. Say, ye mountains of Gilboa, let there be no dew, neither let there be rain upon you. Say, and Gilboa. No fields of offerings. For there the shield of the mighty is vilely cast away. The shield of Saul, as though he had not been anointed with oil. That David couldn't understand why a man who had been anointed with oil. David should be killed in battle. To him, as long as the holy oil has touched you, you are invincible. You have left the realms of ordinary men into another realm. So he didn't understand why King Saul, having been anointed with the holy oil of God in the past, should die in battle. But the question, David knew that this anointing left King Saul. Nobody knew better than David the situation of King Saul. Because he was the one who, when this anointing left, an evil spirit came and took over King Saul's life. And this spirit used to torment King Saul. David was the one who used to play music to calm down and control this demonic force. And that was how David was first employed in King Saul's palace. Yet in the mind of David, David if the oil has touched you before, if God has ever anointed you, you have become invincible. It It is impossible for any man to defeat you. It is impossible for your enemies to defeat you because you've been touched by God's oil in the past. Amen. Amen. So you can understand David's understanding of the anointing. That is why he never lost a battle. For him, as long as he had been anointed with oil, nobody could stand before him. Nobody could defeat him. No enemy could bring him down. That was the mindset of David. And so when King Saul died, he said, how are the mighty falling? How come that a man who had been anointed with oil. He said he was swifter than eagle. And he was stronger than a lion. So how come that he was defeated in battle? Hallelujah. Amen. That gives us a picture of what the anointing of the Holy Ghost does to believers. David proved that. David, he walked in that. Then the second lamentation, 
The second lamentation. Amen. Amen. The second lamentation dealt with the case of Abner. Abner used to be the captain of the Israeli army. Now, Israel the commander in chief. At the time David was employed in King Saul's house. David Abner was the one who was commanding the Israeli army. Abner At the time the battle between the Philistines and Israelis took place, where uh, Goliath came and bragged about who he was. Abner was the commander in chief. So David knew this man in person. He knew his abilities. But when God wanted to set David over Israel as king, King Saul persecuted David. Now for nothing, for no wrong. Amen. Amen. So finally, David had to take refuge in the land of his enemies, the Philistines. That's how come he found himself in Ziglag. Amen. 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 And then after King Saul died, now King Saul, the Bible said there was long war between the house of Saul and the house of David. And Abner was the one who stood for the house of Saul. And David and his men also fought with them. But the Bible says in this long war, King Saul's house became weaker and weaker. And David and his men became stronger and stronger. David and one day it happened. Now that could be a that each person who had taken over control of King Saul's family now, and his household, he accused Abner of having a, an affair with King Saul's concubine. Now, the the concubine. And Abner was so infuriated. Now, Abner uh, Amen. Amen. Abner was so infuriated. Now, and he, he said, Look, I've risked my life. I've risked my life. I say, What but now, bra back when you move, baby. Made my bra bar to a howl. Or the Nabra bar to a howl. Amen. Amen. I've done everything for your father's house. My yet be our old affair. And now you accuse me. Of some wrong. Now, what they are saying at Thomas, so when you are in here, I swear to you and to God that if I don't hand over Israel, say man for Israel to go to to David, I got David in sir. Then God Himself should deal with me. And the Urade enemy, Amen. Amen. So Abner was infuriated, and he Abner na nibuafu. Abner knew very well that David had been anointed by God. He had been chosen by God. But somehow he stood against the will of God. And fought with, the, with David and his men. So when this thing happened, he became very angry. And, he, and, and he, he, he said to the household of Saul, now, I have risked my life. I have done everything for you. And now you are accusing me for something. I'm no longer going to fight your battles for you. I'm no longer going to lead your people. I'm going to turn the whole of Israel to David. And he began to talk to the elders of Israel. Now Israel and said to them, Now you people for a long time have been yearning for David to 
be your leader. David, if you are willing, I'm going to bring him and the rest of Israel together. So that he will be the king over the whole of Israel. And when he consulted the leaders of Israel, he found out that they wanted David to be their king. Now so who said went to see David. David. David was living in Hebron. That was where he was at the time. Now David, your our Hebron, one and now our Samuel. When Abner went, now Emra Abner called the commander in chief of David's army. Now near Odi David as raf one and nimuno. He wasn't around. He and some of the top military men, they were not around. They are gone in pursuit of some enemies. And I went with about 20 other people. So he went and spoke to Abner. And said, for a long time, the people want you to be the king. Now I want to come into an agreement with you. So that I hand over Israel to you. And then all these battles leave your head. And you will be free. And you will be the king over the whole of Israel. And David had a conversation with him. And David said. I will agree to this on one condition. Now Abner first wanted to bring to meet David, and David said, I will not meet you until you meet one condition for me. Now said, King Saul gave me his daughter Michal to be my wife. Now say on him saw the neba Michal mama said, and then in the midst of the warfare between us, he took my wife away and gave her to another man. If you want to meet me, go and bring my wife. Amen. Amen. Take her from the man who is married to her now. Because the bride price that King Saul asked me to pay was the first kings of a hundred Philistines. And David actually provided 200. That means he went out, fought with 200 men, slew them. And then brought their first king. So I am not going to meet you until my wife is restored to me. Because I married her at a great price. Amen. Amen. I married her at a great price. So David sent to Ishbosheth. And to David is so. The, the, the son of Saul, who was then leading the house of household of Saul. David Saul or Babia now or no this Saul fierce. Amen. Amen. And Israel was afraid of David. Nana Osro David. So the moment he heard it, he sent men to go and bring his sister to David. And and when they went, and they captured the woman and said, David wants you back. I don't know how much the woman loved the other man. But before David married her, the Bible says that Mikael really loved David. And all the people in the palace knew that Mikael was in love with David. But King Saul came to hate David so much that he took the wife away, gave her to another man. So when they went and captured her, and they were bringing her to now, David. The other husband followed her crying. And they were bringing her to David. 
The Bible says she followed the woman and was crying. But let them say now or your body now also. And Abner told him, "Now Abner, catch her and say, you better return home. Cry to to home for now. And stop crying. Else, and when the commander in chief of an of your of the army of your nation gives you such a command, you simply have to obey. And Omra Osa Penin so Abba myself put on our soul. So after all these things, now where you now, Abner and David sat down. And David had a feast for Abner and his men. Now, Abner came with about 20 men. They had a conversation. They came to an agreement. Now, from there, he was going to turn Israel over to David. Now, Israel will become one nation under King David. David So he saw him off. Shortly after that, Abner and his men who had gone in pursuit of some so some enemies came in. And those were David's men. And Abner was the commander in chief of David's men. David Joab was the commander in chief. Sorry. Joab. He, he came in. And when he came, people in the palace said, You missed something. You missed an opportunity. Abner was here. Na Abna oha. Say really? I say ah, sir. So yes. I say ah, and David held a feast for him. Na David ye duane to party man. What? I say ah, yeah. Held a feast for our chief enemy. Ah, ye town for penny or ye duane mano. He say yes. I say ah, and he allowed him to go scot free. Na say ah, no ma fa no who di call sir. I mean, people can say things. Amen. Amen. So uh, 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 Joab was infuriated. And he went to David. He said, how come that you allow Abner to flee? Why did you allow him to go? You know, this man is very crafty. He came to spy. To know your movements so that you will come in a stronger way to fight us. Why did you allow him to go? Well, the Bible doesn't say what David said. It looked like David was quiet. Then Joab left the presence of David. And then quickly he sent information to Abner on his way back to do the, to carry out his part of the agreement. That the king wants to meet you be, finally before you go. So Abner came thinking that it was a peaceful dialogue that was going to take place. But in the midst of the long war between the house of Saul and the house of David, Abner had killed a younger brother of Joab. He had killed him in warfare. And Joab was harboring this sentiment. Amen. 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 So when Abner came, Namra Abner he thinking that he had already met King David and they've had a comfortable discussion. When he team no, he said, "What's here on David now, man? Yeah, as soon as you there was no big problem. Then there, how be any hope? Joab killed him. Now Joab Ekun, he pierced his side with a spear. Or the a giant a warning. The very place where he also smote his brother and killed him. And so it was reported to David that Joab had killed Abner. Sir, Joab Ekun Abner. And David was infuriated. And he, David Bufui. And he was grieved. And he, oh, Amen. 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 And he said, How? So I said, Abner. That's when David lamented with that lamentation over 
Abner. And David said, Thy hands were not bound, nor thy feet put in fetters. As a man followed before wicked men, so fellest thou. And all the people wept again over him. And David's lamentation was simple. Your hands were not bound. You, Amen. You had your sword with you. Your feet had not been bound. You were a free man. Why did you die like a fool? So you look at the two lamentations. David didn't understand why King Saul, anointed, touched by the oil of God, should be defeated by enemies. And you didn't understand why Abner now, not bound in prison. His feet is not in fetters. His hands free to fight. His sword hanging by his side allowed an enemy to kill him. Amen. Amen. He didn't understand these two things. So, so he lamented over these two things. The oil of God upon your life makes you invincible. The sword of the spirit in your mouth makes you victorious and you should not go down before the enemy like a fool. Hallelujah. Amen. David didn't understand that. David and How said, can I be anointed by God? How can I carry the sword with me and anybody should overcome me? It's just not possible. You see, this was foreshadowing what God will do in the New Testament. Amen. Amen. The Bible says the anointing you have received abides in you. We have received an anointing from God. John the Baptist said, John, uh, John I the Baptist baptize with water. But he that comes after me, he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So we have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. Amen. Amen. The spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead is a living force. He is fire. He is within us. And we should not be overcome by any other force. If we have the sword of the spirit, in our hands. In other words, if the word of God abides in us, and we operate on the principles of the word of God, in the mind of David, our David, under no circumstances should we be overcome. Under no circumstances should the enemy have the upper hand with us in battles. No matter how much he, he attacks us, we should come out victorious. Hallelujah. Amen. And so David lamented with this, these bitter lamentations. And these were the reasons for which he lamented so bitterly over this man. Amen. Amen. Jesus himself said, yes, when said, the Holy Ghost comes, we shall receive power. Yes, Amen. Amen. When the Holy Ghost comes, we shall receive power. Yes, Paul said, Paul said, that we are one spirit with the Lord. Within us, the Holy Spirit of God has become one with our spirit. He said, he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. That one in the Greek means one to the exclusion of the other. 
So it means that within our spirit, the spirit of the living God has come into us. It's in a kind of fusion or union of us. The Holy Spirit isn't sitting somewhere in our occupying somewhere in our hearts. And we also live in somewhere. And that's why the anointing must operate in our lives. Whatever we face in life, whatever we face in life, whatever battles we come against, we are the people who must have the upper hand. It's been my belief and my conviction since I responded to the call of God that wherever the Lord sends me I can take that place. Amen. Amen. It doesn't matter what difficulties I face but I will come out victorious. No matter what the enemy throws at me I will come out victorious. When I first went to Sweden the people so despise the work that we were doing. So we will go and witness to somebody. And then when the person tries to come to church, people will say, Ah, I don't know how to say it in English. Ah, In other words, the church of the do nothings, the non entities. You uh, want to join that church? Now, our church says, "I'm sorry, I'm not coming to church. 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 I'm not but would you believe that today they control the trade and commerce of the town? They, they, have, they have become hotel owners. Real estate developers. They own the, the, the big time businesses in town. Amen. Amen. The people used to look down at us. And I always told them that the young shall grow. Amen. Amen. Then when we began to pick up, people started criticizing from different angles. In fact, initially we didn't even have the intent of us of establishing a church. We went there to evangelize and to establish a non-denominational kind of fellowship at the time. So we will, we will go out there and witness to people and bring them to Christ. Then we will tell them the kind of churches that we thought were good so they should join them. Some of the churches were assemblies of God, the Baptist church, Baptist. The Pentecost church. Pentecost. But these same churches became our enemies. Amen. Amen. So they began to fight us. Now most at we want a lot of people who went there and joined those churches and were active there. Now I remember visiting the Assemblies of God one Sunday morning. The Assemblies of God in the town. I visited them one Sunday morning. Because Sundays we were not meeting. And while the service was going on, they asked first timers to stand up. So I stood up. I didn't know the pastor. Unknown to me, he knew me. So when I stood up, he said, You say, Whoa, look, since you've come here, I want to warn you publicly before other people. Be very, very careful. 
Don't bring any confusion to this church. I felt like walking away. But I held myself together. And then he said, <laughs> Amen. And then he said, I believe you understand what I'm what I'm saying. Now, okay, say, me did say, what's in your make and I said, I said yes. Now, me can say, Annie, and I sat down. Now, me tonight. From then on, I didn't hear anything that was said in this. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So I was in my house. My house was not far from a service of God. And it wasn't also far from the Baptist church. Amen. Amen. So I was in the house a few days after. And I heard a knock. I opened the door. It was a service of God pastor. Now a service of God suffer. I was surprised. And I looked at his face. And he said, Pastor, I've come to see you. And I said, over what? He said, I've come to apologize to you. Then I said to him, for what? And he said, please, let's sit down. So we sat down. Now you're and then he said, well, his elders confronted him after the service. And had a serious argument with him. That what he did was wrong. So he had come to apologize to me. I bowed my head. And then I lifted my head. I said, okay. I've accepted your apology. So we became friends from that time. Another time, but when we first went to Swedru, the Baptist church had collapsed. They had only two people. So when one preached, the other would sit down and listen. The, the day the other one will preach, this other one will also sit down. One was a young man of my age at the time. The other was an elderly man about my current age now. So whenever the young man was going to preach. He had a fiance, a lady he wanted to marry. He will invite the lady to come to church. So he will have a congregation of two. <laughs> Amen. Amen. It was in that atmosphere that we met this church. And because not much was happening in their temple, they gave us their place to worship. And because we were not establishing a church at most of the people we want, we want our people from the streets and from the houses. And so the people came. And on Sundays, many of them decided to worship the Baptist church. So finally, the Baptist convention heard that the church had been restored. They had a student pastor who was in school. So after he came out of school, they sent him to Siedru. Because the work had been revived. So he came to lead them. Then, you know the Baptist, they have what they call the induction service. Amen. So, on the day of his induction, they came to see me that uh, they didn't have any equipment if we could just lend them our public address system. Now, 
We had struggled so much to get the few public address equipments that we had. So I went there to fix them for them myself. And I sat at the tail end of the church. So that when they finish, I could pick my things and go home. While the service was going on, I don't know what information had gone out. One of their ministers, a visiting minister, now stood up and said, There is a group in this town. When you hear their name, you think they are people of God. But they are wolves in sheep clothing. Their name is but Gospel Ambassadors. <laughs> he was using our own public address system. I bowed my head. Now I decided I will stay. So the whole service was over. And I went to collect my things. Then some of the leaders came to me. Actually, some of them were our converts. At that time, nobody called me pastor. They called me evangelist because that was what we were doing, just evangelizing. So they came to me and said, please, evangelist. Now I can say, San Pakeni. Please forgive us. We are very sorry for what our pastor did. And I said, what's your problem? He said, what he said. I said, what did he say? He said, he said, you were wolves in sheep clothing. And I said, should that bother you? No, I said, I was away so how I know. I know I'm a Christian. Maybe you say me a Christian. Somebody sees me as a wolf in sheep clothing. Oh, Ben, so who must have to go? I'm a demon. I'm a cat. I'm the one who have, who has a problem. Me and I'm worse than me. I'm worse. I have to go and examine myself. Me and I was saying, I'm going to show you exactly what I did. Near me, yeah, yeah, no. For somebody to conclude, say, oh, be best side, na yano say. I was. A wolf in sheep clothing. So you you don't have any problem. I have to solve my problem. Then they brought me some of the things that they were serving. Of course, I rejected it. And then I picked my things away. But before they realized, we have captured the town. Then the people began to say, Pastor, any church that we enter, they are preaching against you. They are attacking you. Even when we go to church on Sundays, and, so and they mention one particular church, so the, the pastor is always preaching against. He doesn't preach Christ. So why don't you start our Sunday service for us? We were people in the world. We were on the streets. And you came and led us to Christ. So when we go and they are insulting you, attacking you, we feel so bad. So why don't you start something for us? And when we started, the criticism was so intense that the people couldn't come to church. In the evenings, they will come for our Bible studies and prayer meetings. But Sunday morning, they will not come. Because the criticism, you know, small towns, they are different. The criticism was so intense. So they didn't come. And everything got scattered. And we had to start afresh. And I had to encourage them. Then I told my people, Listen, if you live in a mad house 
a madhouse that you built yourself. And somebody lives in a terrazzo house. Now obey our terrazzo which he has rented. Ah no no who, who is a landlord? Yeah. Amen. Who is a landlord? They said the man who lives in the madhouse. And I said, what do the people think we are nothing or we are something? It doesn't matter. This is our generation. This is what the Lord has asked us to build. And so let's focus on what we are building. And let's forget about those people who came and met churches and they have become just members and they are making noise. We have been taxed by God. We have been taxed by God that we should do something for him. And that is what we are going to do. I believe so much in the anointing upon me that we will break every barrier in the town. We will rise above every setback in the town. Apart from the attack which I had, which I told you about yesterday. Attack so many things happened to me but my confidence was just high we were so needy at the time at the time I met Dr. Ablo for the first time one day he said the Lord asked him to give us some money now I said but we were in need of that money more than anything. Because can you imagine somebody who just came out of secondary school to start ministry? What did he have? I had nothing. My wife had just graduated from polytechnic. And she agreed to marry somebody like me. Amen. Amen. So together we were struggling through it. So the place where we lived before we started the church. When somebody goes to witness to them and tell them, come. They will say, which church? They say, Gospel ambassadors. I say gospel ambassadors. Ah, say, that ah, church. Ah, sorry, sorry, no. The pastor eats nothing but Gary, Gary alone. So for no only way, Gary, Kwan, Odida. Then the people come and ask me, Pastor, how did they know that Gary is what you eat? Now, Kofona be besides us off on Kofona, we see them who say Gary, now we did that. I said, because I don't have the money to buy the Gary in big cups, I buy the small one that they tied. I said, if you said, I said, I said, I I said, 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 I and add it to it. Oh, that the miracle had happened. And that Amen. But I have no time to sit down and think about my woes. no, 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 Amen. Amen. I was only focused on what I could do for them. Because I believed I was anointed. I believe I can battle through that issue. I believe I will come out victorious. Amen. Amen. Today, when I go to Sidru, and then because we have a twin house on the four plot of land. We don't, we don't even have somebody to live in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the pastor is the one who is supposed to live there. He has built a very beautiful house. So he lives in his house. So the one we bought, we bought that house from a contractor. Amen. Amen. It's there. 
But that was the beginning of those things. I remember the day I was going to Shedu to start the work. I had all my belongings in a bag. I was hanging on my neck like this. I was hanging on my neck like this. I was hanging on my Amen. I had everything in it. And then I had a sack. Now our bottle. That was the year 1984. In 1983, Ghana had been through a very serious, serious drought and famine. And the Catholic Church had brought in relief items. So we held a camp meeting in Kumasi. And the Catholic Church gave us some of their items to feed our people at the camp meeting. We actually wrote to them and they consented. So when we finished the camp meeting, I gathered the leftovers. I believe some of you are pastors. And I believe you are struggling to raise churches. That's why I'm sharing these things with you. Amen. Amen. So I gathered the leftovers. I had a little bit of wheat. A little bit of corn. A bro. A little bit of gari, gari kakra. and I tied them all in a sack. Now, At that time, you couldn't get a vehicle straight to Shedru. So, we had Tata buses that would take off from Kaneshi opposite the uh, Mpamprom Hotel. So, I had brought my things there waiting for a Tata bus. Then I saw a vehicle passing. One of my classmates. And a steady mate. We attended the same school from form 1 to form 5. And then we moved to a different school together for 6 form. And actually, not to brag, as a matter of uh, explaining my point, I was ahead of him academically. So he and some other friends love to study with me. He had gone to Europe to study engineering. And he was he had returned. Now And he saw me with my sack and my bag at Pamprom Hotel. And the one who said me baggy and me bottle, I was. How would you feel? say if you was an engineer, at least I could also have been an engineer. Say engineer, me Not too long ago, he became the head of Bost Bulk Oil Storage. I won't mention his name. <laughs> but he was a very close friend, and he still is a friend. This was a Gaza Gaza. Of course, he Gaza Gaza. I lift up my head. So what are you doing here? What are you doing here? So then I will have. Then I will have. So well, I'm going to Shedru. So I make calls. And he left. And now I felt so bad. Now, but I was confident. And my media that, that, will so be, that will not be my story at the end of the day. Amen. I knew the Lord was going to do me good. Now, whilst I was standing, it started raining. I had Gary in the sack. I had my wheat in the sack. They were so precious to me. How could I allow the rains to soak them? Amen. <laughs> so I, I picked the, the sack. Left my clothing in the rain. And I was in a, a bag made of leather sewn at Cantamanto. Now the leather Cantamanto. So I went to a woman who was selling on a table. I said, Madam, can you please keep this sack under your table for me. 
Madame is raw bet me a cram a bottle with a pony acid. And she said, Oh, why not? Bring it. I said, Oh, Adam, Fabra. So I was spared the trouble of my Gary soaking, my wheat soaking, and those things. Send a bear and so no soaking Gary and Mammy. So finally, I had a Tata bus to Shedru. And the young Chatrano, Minya Tata, that's how I went there. Sakwansu and I'm the area where I began. The people knew me. And the Ayabia, Missa, I came with nothing. So when God began to bless the work, and people began to talk about the work, they would say in fancy. Amen. I will translate it myself. Ah, don't we know this guy? Don't we know this guy? When he came to town, he was like somebody who would be blown by the wind. Where the enemy no, the enemy no. No, by no, yet so be a from man bet me a bond and I'm from man then echo. And I will tell people whether I was being blown by the wind or not. Now my catch and for the sign I'm from man a bond me and I say I'm mommy. Everybody must make make progress in life. I was so be a boy, but I bought quite no more. So what's their problem with me making progress? And the idea from so I say, men so my boy, I bought quite no more. But I believe in the anointing of the Lord upon me. Now me think I'm coming to say what me should do before they realize. I'm on the bomb, oh, we had captured the town. Now you have far so many no things more. that God led us to do. One of the most amazing things that the Lord led us to do was that on Easter Monday, Monday, much of the Monday, township, the young people and the middle-aged people, they will go to Winneba Beach to go and swim. To drink and to do all manner of things. So by the time that they will come to an end, either a vehicle carrying someone that will be involved in an accident, people will die. Or the sea will have drowned some people. Every year it happened. Then I came up with an idea. Now may the agenda be by that we're going to have a breakfast meeting. Sir, yeah, quite yeah. Because I saw that Fast. even some of the new converts in our church. Now we were so enticed by it. I mean, the whole thing was like a carnival. Right from early morning, a lot of people getting ready to go. Now I quite be this first senti and no panna ko for be bre omo pani harusu akohonum. So we started a breakfast meeting. And see, yes, sir, sir, I did do my dear Wahono. And we, uh, our choir had become very good at that time. Now, your choir knows who a genum, some we will invite people to come. Now, yeah, back to South Franco for some umbra. We will preach against that Easter Monday thing that we were doing. Now, you better cast and panel at yes, sir. Before we realized we are broken back, it was no longer at all. So Easter Mondays, people will just flood into our church. And we began to bring other singing groups from other churches to come and join us. It became a lively thing. And by that, we stopped that nonsense. It's a small town, but it's a very dangerous town. Amen. Amen. So a lot of things were happening there. Which we fought through the gospel. And through the grace of God upon our lives. And before we realized. Everybody was talking about us. Now, Biakaya was amen. Amen. Everybody was talking about no, Biakaya was, and we had won all manner of people. Nan, yes, I can call for Kobebri. And today, and those people control the trade and commerce of that town. A judge, a judge, a judge, you know, a Safunumu for, and I just encourage you. The person is still crying. The spirit in you, he is not afraid of the challenges that you meet. He is not afraid of the difficulties that come your way. Whether it's poverty or sickness or whatever, he will lead you to overcome. He will make you victorious. There was a man in the town, very well known at the time. 
he left his church and came to join us. So later on, when he when I decided to leave Sweden, the man came to me. He said, Pastor. Please, I want you to come and see what the Lord has done in my life through your ministry. And now, I wasn't interested. But I respected him. So he kept on pushing. So one day, I decided to go. Then he took me to his workplace. He said, I, believe, I was living in this town for 19 years before I joined Gospel Ambassadors. And I joined Gospel Ambassadors with nothing in my hands. I'm not from this area. My uncle sent me here. I came with a son, a cousin of mine. And we came to start a printing press. After 19 years, he told me that the printing press belongs to his son. And I left without one city. Now, one city, friend, I was broken hearted. And that was the time I had just joined Gospel Ambassador. Through your teachings. Now, come and see. So we went to his place. Somehow God had given him brand new latest equipment that operated on computers and other things. And for the 19 years that he was in town. Now, 19 years and no he didn't problem. even have land. But he had built a very nice house. Now we see a within the last six years. I was that he joined, joined our church. And Mira joined he said, this is what your teaching had done for me. Sir, I want you to know it before you leave town. So the man took me there. And see, what am I saying? David didn't understand why an anointed man should fail. David and Tiasa said, Why somebody who carries the spirit of God upon him should be defeated by the enemy? Amen. Amen. Didn't and did you understand why we should have the sword in our hands and still be, die like rats? No matter what you are facing in your life. The victory is on your side. And found your own no matter where you are where you're you're the victory is on your side. And found your own and couldn't be a wedia. When I left to Shedru, and Brammy Free Shedru, I came to Tema. Meba Tema. The church grew so fast. I saw no quenumuntem. At the end of three years, I will enthusiasm me and say, children, the Lord said to me, Now, Copa Catchamus said, If you stay here, sir, what's now how there's a revival that will break out. Uh, but I don't want you here. I want you to move to Kumasi. In the first place, before I came to Tema, I was planning to come to Accra. And then the Lord said to me, if you go to Accra, the work will explode in your hands. But I don't want you in Accra. If it was for why don't you want me there? Then he asked me to go to Tema. Now catch him, I went to Tema. After precisely three and a half years, he told me if you don't leave. Okay, and go to Kumasi. No one call Kumasi. There will be a revival. And Kenya be it will be very difficult for you to leave. Kumasi is where I want you to be. So I left for Kumasi. It's been a very challenging place. But we are making progress. I mean it's still a challenging place. That's why, that's why. That's why you are in Kumasi. Yes sir. 
How is your work going? It's not easy. <laughs> Good, yes, <laughs> what a church. <laughs> what a church. <laughs> Amen. It's been a challenging place. I appreciate it. But we are triumphing. And so you in spite of all that Satan throws at us. We are more than conquerors. Amen. Amen. Because we are anointed of God. And that anointing cannot fail us. It cannot bring us down. Simply because of the anointing that is upon our lives. We have the sword of the spirit in our hands. We will triumph over any adversity. We will triumph over any difficulty. And I come to encourage you today in the name of Jesus Christ. No matter what you face, no matter what the enemy throws at you, you are the victor. Hallelujah. Amen. You are the victor. In spite of your circumstances, in spite of your difficulties, I have a childhood friend he lives in Tema still. Recently, I was in Tema and I visited him. He Charlie, you've tried Pao. I remember the time when you and your wife had to go to public toilet. Amen. I, I was just looking at him. He had, just, he had visited us in Kumasi a few months before. And he said, but now look at you. Look at your house. Look at your cars. I was just looking at him. And in our old age now, now we are in pain Sometimes those of them who used to have advantage over me financially, now I have, to, I have to cushion them financially. The Lord will do great things in your life. Anointing upon your life. The Spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead lives in you. No adversity. No opposition. No hardship. It's beyond him. And that's why the Bible says we are more than conquerors. Hallelujah. We are more than conquerors. Yes, in Kunim Difu. Amen. 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 Shall we lift up our hands and yes. bless the name yes. of the Lord? Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. The oil of the Holy Spirit. The oil of the Holy Spirit is upon your life. The hand of the Lord is upon you. The sword of the Spirit is with you. You cannot be defeated. You cannot be brought down. You may have setbacks. You may have challenges. But you triumph in the midst of all those things. So lift up your hands and bless the name of the Lord. Lift up your hands and give glory to God. You are more than a conqueror. You are more than a conqueror. You are more than a conqueror. Lift up every challenge that you are facing right now to the Lord. And thank God for that challenge. Because his spirit is upon you. You will overcome. You have even overcome already. Whatever difficulty. Whether it's in your personal life or in any other area of your life, ministry or whatever, you are more than a conqueror. You will triumph in the midst of our adversity. The glory of God is upon you. The spirit of God is at work in you. Just lift up your heart to the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Give the Lord glory for the great things. For the great things. For the great things. He has set before you. And may you be strengthened in the inner man. To push. To persevere. Until you see the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Our Father, we thank you for this morning. We worship you, O oh God. We bless your holy name. 
for all that you've done in our lives. We thank you for the challenges that you've made us overcome. We bless your holy name for everything that you have done. And we know that we have overcome the world because we are born of God. We give you glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to please be seated. I want to say something small and I'll sit down. Amen. Amen. Don't be afraid of starting small or starting with challenges. I remember those days. God will make me preach anywhere. In buses. In those days, transportation was tough in Ghana. The early days of Rollins. Very, very tough. Amen. Amen. One day, I was at Tema Station here in Accra. And people had gathered in their numbers. Looking for buses to different places. The buses were not available. So we're all sitting there. Waiting for any time at all that a vehicle will come. Then the Lord says, stand up and preach. How can I stand up and preach? How can I preach in this place? Lord, how long will I be humiliated? I can't preach here. And you know, the Lord, he will not argue with you. But the, the voice was there, persistent. I say, for today, I say, and that day, I can rise up and preach. Me, to me, so I didn't cast them. I've been humiliated too many times. <laughs> then I saw a madman coming. Now, me, who bear my be a new abodamba holding a new testament. Now, okra new testament wearing clothing from uh, mental hospital at Abraka. Now, or Saturday, on the actual move, mental. And then he came and was singing a hymn. Now, now, to him, maybe. Now, as soon as he got there, he started preaching. Now, now, I started I tell you, he preached from the book of Amos. Oh. He was holding a New Testament, but he had that scripture in memory. He preached from the book of Amos. Now, I'm and the message I myself felt was so powerful. And I said, Who is this madman? Ah, now Then when he finished, he said, God has said that in the last days he poured his spirit upon all flesh. And when he poured out his spirit, I was at the psychiatric hospital. Now and I and I received my share. Then he opened up his New Testament and started taking an offering. Now, the Bible, now He was singing to him and taking the offering. Now, or to him, people started giving to him. I was so ashamed because the Lord told me to stand up. Even and the madman, the people listened to him. Now, Amen. Amen. So. This man was singing and collecting the offering. Now, to nyum na oje. And the woman in the crowd said, "Now, our baby was don't mind him. Don't mind him. Men finu, men finu. All this money that is collected, he's going to buy a petechi with it." Ah, she called in. Now they got to a petechi. Then the man stopped. Now, our baby ejai. And said, "Because of this woman, I say, enam sa ba yenti. I will preach the gospel again." Mesai akasem ni biu. Amen. Amen. Then he started talking about the rebellion of women in the Bible. Now, <laughs> He started from Eve. Now, Women have, have, have been rebellious since creation. Please, women, forgive me. That's what. I say, Mamu, every the story of Eve. He told of Delilah and Samson. Delilah, 
And then when he finished, he took his offering and he left. Amen. Amen. That day, I was shocked. I've never forgotten it. The point I'm making is this. If you don't do what you are supposed to do, God is able to raise all anybody. Amen. Amen. One day I was coming from Takrade to Accra. And maybe now me free Takrade Accra. The bus was packed. Na bus in and dom a wom. And the Lord and the Lord said, "Get up and preach." Na urade say sorry. Na kanya mi asem. So I got up. That's how I learned to preach. Na eho me sorry. Awkward places. Difficult situations. So I got up to preach. And a man stood up from it was a big bus. Overloaded. We were more than 70 people in the bus. And the man stood up and said, Now sorry, Hey, so for you Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. As we are thinking about ourselves, we are shouting Jesus, Jesus. We are looking for a man to do that when somebody says Snatches your wife. Snatches your wife. You can, wife you can, you can, can get her back. Get the person back. <laughs> so I continued preaching. I didn't listen to him. Then he also began made his noise louder. No, no, so she said, "Say, oh, pejane ne." That somebody has snatched his wife with juju. Say, oh, be enam a kwe tibone so I can't hear. That's why he's traveling. And nothing now what to come. They've showed him a place where he can get his wife back. Oh, omo chele baby obe timi anya ne yere. Ne sa na akan. By the time I finished with the preaching, Abraham we asempano. The man had given his life to Christ. Na odene kwa ama Christo, Amen. So when we are lighted in Accra, and he drew Accra, and I was continuing to tema. Now me twaso kwa tema no. He came to me. Oba me change. He said, Osofu. Ose Osofu. Where do you come from? Ufri he. So I'm from Tema. So me free Tema. So where are you going? I said I'm going to Tema. Ose to oko ose me kwa Tema. He said I'm a seaman. Ose me yeye juma opuso. And somebody has snatched my wife. Obi aje me yere. So this man followed me all the way to Tema. Na odi maji eko Tema. We had a little office in Tema Community Five. Now your yeah, office be our Community Five, whatever. So we went there. And here, Koho. The man was patient enough. Now Onya, but sat down with me. At Nasi, I encourage him. Me say I prayed with him. Me nene bumpa ye. And he didn't go to see the juju man. Now we are called Confuni and the juju one. We parted company. We parted company at that point. Now Eho no. I haven't heard of him since that time. I don't time. know what has become of him. I don't know what has of him. But when him near Atom, that was when I was very young. But whatever it is, God used me to touch his life. No matter what the circumstances, no matter where you have been planted, God is going to use you to do something in somebody's life. Amen. Amen. God bless you.